one love, one aim, one destiny. Hiya, I them say more. I every pass it them a shout out more. I on the dance floor, I them a ball out more. I on the dance. Seven reasons I love Colombia. Now this is a tough topic because I've got dozens of things. So I tried to narrow it down to important things and things that just may be of interest to you if you're going to visit or move to Colombia. So let's hit it. Big category. Food. Number one. Quality of the food, it's very good, very high quality, better than other places I've been in South America. It's, it's equivalent on par as pretty much the United States. Beef tastes like beef. It's not tough, it's not stringy. Um, Chicken tastes like chicken, although I will say they like to dye the skin here just like they do in Ecuador because people seem to think that a yellow skin is a, a better chicken. Uh, chicken skin is basically it's white unless it's a really old chicken, uh, but it's a practice in Ecuador and um, unfortunately it's a practice here. I mean it doesn't hurt you, it's just dye, but so the quality is very high. I will also say it is very different from when I lived here before. When I lived here before the food was just um, like other places in South America it was your basic stuff. Typica comida it's you know it's rice and it's a little piece of meat and you know it's boring and bland and, but it's amazing what a decade and a half will do to a country you can go and buy full range of spice, you find hot sauces on every table in the restaurants. But more than that, you'll find international cuisine everywhere. Whether you like Mexican or Chinese or French or German, uh, Japanese, you're going to find it. For the life of me, all the time in Ecuador, I couldn't find a bento box, for example. And here, it's, they'll deliver it to your door. So. There's an appreciation of international food, but even beyond that, Cuenca, Ecuador, for example, has a lot of international food, but much of it is really just Ecuador food changed a little bit. So it all kind of tastes the same. But here, if you go and have Mexican, it tastes like Mexican. If you go and have Italian, it tastes like Italian. It's um, there is a chefy culture here, or a foodie culture, and I've got to appreciate that. Now, related to this, but number two on the list, is delivery. Now, I know that you can get delivery in Cuenca. Now, why do I keep bringing up Cuenca? Because I lived there for three years, and many of my viewers are interested in Cuenca. And you can get so many things delivered just with one telephone app, which is great. However, delivery here is, it's amazing. It's not just food delivery. It's not just pharmacy delivery. If you want something from the butcher shop, they'll bring it here. If you, any of the supermarkets, you, you can order online or you can call them up. They'll deliver it to your house. If you want something from the fish market, you name it, whatever it is that you want brought to your door, new set of dishes, they'll deliver it. Everything is delivered. And the sweet thing is the cost is generally around the 4,000 peso mark, which is a dollar thirty maybe. So it's not only delivery, but it's delivery dirt cheap. Sounds like a song. Okay. 
Number three, and this is actually the biggest reason I love Columbia, the people. But it's not just the people. It's the passion of the people. They wear it on their sleeve. You walk down the street and there's smiles and laughter and people cracking jokes and it's lively, it's full of life. It's energizing. I like that. There's so many places in South America you can go where people just kind of have their head down and they're plodding along and they're suspect of everyone, sometimes for good reason, but it's, it can be depressing sometimes. And you know, the little town I lived in in Ecuador, Hiron, I lived there for a year. And the people there were very nice and very friendly. And when I would walk down into the town, everybody's doing the uh, obligatory good morning and um, people would smile. But in some of the, well, actually every larger population that I went to, uh, it gets more and more constrained probably because there's more pickpockets and cell phone thieves, I don't know, I'm just, that's speculation. Here, people adore, are in love with their city, with their football team, soccer, with their country, fierce patriotism, and with life, life above all. No matter what's going on, they're going to enjoy life. You gotta love that. Okay, number four. This is one of those petty little things, but my God, I missed it. How about napkins? Wherever you go, there's not only napkins, but there's all the napkins you want. Now, one of my video clips that I showed, and I'll throw it in here if I can remember where it is, or maybe I deleted it, so if it doesn't show up, you know why. But I, I, on my trip to Bogota, I went to Bogota, we stopped at the roadside restaurant for lunch and I get out and I bring over an entire package in the plastic of napkins, put it on my table and I'm the only one there. And I look around and everybody's got these big piles of napkins. I miss that. You know, you go in um, some places in the outside of Colombia and you get, order some chicken wings and it's really messy and you get one little napkin. Hey, come on, come on, come on. So, I love that, I appreciate it. Um, and the bathrooms have toilet paper. <laughs> you know, it's the little things in life sometimes that can uh, make your day. Okay, comparison to Ecuador, to Cuenca. Number five, addresses. Every place you're gonna live if you move here, has an address. They actually get deliveries. It's, whether it's FedEx or DHL or a postal service or whatever it is, there's an address. It's not, ah, it's somewhere near here and there and whatever and go down to the big rock and take a right and if you got to the river, you went too far. And I mean, that was Cuenca. I had a heck of a time there, you know, except the first year when I lived in the big building uh, that had delivery. But in the houses, it's, it's hit or miss. So let me tell you what happened. I had a statement. As, as you know, I'm vice president of a foundation in Cuenca. Came to my house a bank statement for the foundation. Uh, wasn't expecting it, didn't know it was coming. But they brought it and threw it through the gate and landed on the ground. Now you know that it rains a lot. And at the time this was brought, it was raining every day, every night. It was constant rain. They just threw it out there. It was by sheer luck that it didn't get ruined. Uh, here you have actual delivery. You have an address. If you give somebody an address, they can come right to where you are, which also is a real benefit when you're ordering up a taxi. Uh, number six, it's a car culture. I grew up with automobiles, didn't we all? 
Maybe we all didn't, but I did. And I love it. And there's a lot of things about a car culture that you can see in Colombia. For example, when you're going from one city to the other, the countryside is full of houses out in the country. It's full of houses because people have cars. Everybody's got cars and motorcycles. Uh, maybe not everybody, but so many people have it. It's a common thing. I went online and checking out uh, some cars and I found roadworthy cars easily for sale between one and $3,000. To, to get a, the cheapest junk, hunk of junk you can find in Cuenca was five grand. And if you wanted anything roadworthy, you really had to get up around 10. So there's it financially viable for people here to buy some sort of transportation. There's all kinds of scooters and motorcycles for sale for under $1,000. So it's easy to get. Therefore, it's easy to have property between cities. And so instead of you leave one city and you go to the next and you just have these broad expanses of nothing, you've got people living, which means there's houses out there that are for rent or for sale with these nice properties. It's, it's common, it's prevalent. So living in a car culture is pretty cool. Now, having said that, when you live in a city, transportation is, is not a problem. Uh, taxis are more than plentiful. I, in, in Armenia, in Pereira, in Manizales, in Cali, I've never seen so many taxis in these cities. In Bogota, it, if you missed a taxi, there'll be another one 30 seconds behind them, and it's, it's like everywhere. They are smaller taxis. These are little pint-sized taxis for the most part, but you know, unless you're out shopping for a ton of stuff, it doesn't make any difference. So, the taxis are there and they're as cheap or cheaper than Ecuador. Uh, buses cost more, uh, but they're also plentiful. If you missed a bus, there'll be one in 10 seconds. There's just constant flow of buses. So while it's a car culture, public transportation is, it's there for you. And last thing I'll mention, and someone brought up the, they related it to being civilized, is the pet culture. In the cities that I just named, with the exception of Cali, but in the coffee area, you don't really see street dogs. I mean, I'm sure there's one here and there, but you don't see street dogs. There's certainly not packs of them roaming around. Uh, since I've been here, I haven't seen a single street dog. I've seen a couple dogs off their leash with the owner right there and the dog just going to pee or something. Um, not where it's crowded, on side streets where pretty much where they live. But everybody's got their dogs out, they're on leashes, you see a lot of these little, uh, you know, got a bow tie and <laughs> little over cute doggy things. The dogs are clean, they're groomed. There's not poop in the streets. People pick up after their dogs. There is a pet culture where it's not like a side thing. It's, it's like a part of their family. They take care of them. They care for these pets. You see people out constantly walking their dogs. It's a different type of thing. They're not just some accessory to throw to the curb. They're, they're cared for. And the theory of someone told me that that represents a level of culture that doesn't exist in a lot of places in South America. I don't know. It may be true. I mean, it, it sounded maybe true, but I don't know. I'm not saying that people aren't good if they're not in Colombia. I'm just saying there's a different attitude. There's a different way of looking th at things. And it may go back to that love of life in general and appreciation of everything. So those are my, so that's my list about why I love Colombia. I will probably do another one because there's just, 
there's just a lot of things, not just for me to, oh, talk about Columbia and it's like, it's because you're watching these videos because either vicariously or maybe you want to go on vacation or maybe you want to consider living somewhere outside of the United States or Canada or wherever you're watching from. Uh, these things will probably be of interest to you. I will also be doing a video about things that I do not like in Colombia. Now when I do that video, I want you to remember this video because when I did that in Ecuador, I got tons of hate mail on the things I didn't like because for some reason they didn't bother watching about the things that I loved. So that's it for this one. I'll see you soon.